Personnel selected, Dave, Toy Restoration Expert and YouTuber. Channel code name, Toy Poloi. Welcome to Toy Poloi. No Legos were harmed in the making of this video. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy and this is part two of my restoration of this vintage Kenner mask Thunderhawk. In the first video I fixed up a relatively nice Thunderhawk and got it looking really good and ready for display but I mentioned at the end of that video that there was much more I wanted to show and that I had ordered myself a really beaten up Thunderhawk and it has arrived and it's actually arrived and I'm thinking it's even more beaten up than I was imagining but I think we can fix it. As you can see this one has really had a hard life. I'm not quite sure what's gone on. It's missing the tires. It's missing the little bits that stick out at the bottom of the doors. And I think it has been covered in PVA glue at some point. So you can see it's absolutely covered in a mess of stuff. So the first thing I need to do before I can even get on with what I wanted to show you uh, sort of fix wise is to clean this up and get it looking really sort of quite different to what it does now, because it certainly is the messiest of car I have ever seen. It only cost me uh, I think it was eight pounds plus postage so really not a great deal of money um, but it's certainly going to be quite a project to get it working as i say i think this is uh, eva glue or pva glue school glue and the reason i think that is because it's starting to peel off you can actually sort of pick it off and that to me looks like pva glue so i'm hoping that all of this will come off if i soak it in water so the first thing i need to do is actually sort of take it apart to get it down to its sort of bare bones pieces and then soak the uh, bits that are covered in this uh, pva glue in water luckily as well it looks like it's just on the top part of the car and so i should be able to take that off quite easy just unscrew the screws at the bottom take this top section off i'll take out any metal pieces and then i'm really just going to leave it to soak for a few hours and i think that will get most of this off if it doesn't then the rest i'm going to have to scrape off by hand using some plastic tools i should be able to sort of scrape these pieces away it may take a while but i think we can get this looking quite nice so that's the first job then as i say what i want to do is show you some other fixes because in my previous video i mentioned that i had an idea for making the little gun pieces that are supposed to come out the bottom of these doors so i've got that as a project it's also missing the tires so we're going to uh, sort out trying to find a replacement for those and then of course we need to add stickers as well to it and get it looking good but uh, yeah first things first I think we're going to have to give this probably the biggest clean I've ever done on any toy and see if we can get it looking half decent. So um, let me take it apart and we'll see if we can get this dirt and grime and glue off the toy.
Okay, so I'm now at the position I wanted to be at the start of this video. I've taken that very scruffy looking car. I've given it a good clean. I was correct. It was PVA glue. So just soaking it in water enabled me to scrub it away. It really did take quite a long time though, because everything was absolutely covered in PVA glue and it was in all of the little joints and pretty much everywhere. So I've had to use toothpicks and all sorts of uh, implements to scrape it out. But as you can see, it's cleaned up really quite nicely. And I've now just added a set of uh, replacement stickers. If you want to see about the stickers, then check out part one of this project where I cover those in detail. But as you can see, we now have a Thunderhawk that actually doesn't look too bad at all. And considering how rough this was when it started, I'm very happy. Now let's get on to the main part of this project. A very common missing part on this Thunderhawk is the infrared wing lasers, the bits that stick out at the end of the wings. If we turn it into the plane mode like this, these pieces at the end are supposed to extend out to be the uh, infrared wing lasers and they are always missing. It's, and the fact they're always missing is because you can actually quite easily pull them out. If you just pull them like that, you can see that is the piece. It's a little bit of plastic and it's chromed, but it's always missing. And without that, the vehicle doesn't look very good. And I've been looking at this thinking, well, how can I go about making something like that? Is it possible? And actually, when you break it down into its component parts, it's fairly simple. So I've made myself a prototype and here it is. So you can see that's my version and that's the original version. I think I've got a pretty close match at the moment. I haven't painted it, but the overall shape is good. And if we slot that into uh, the Thunderhawk, let's slot it into the one that I'm actually fixing up, which is this one. It just slots in the bottom of the wing like that. And you can see that really doesn't look too bad at all. And then we can close that up and the door will still shut. So I'm very happy with my prototype. And that's what we're going to make today. We're going to make the final version from my prototype. So I've taken what I've made there. I've made some measurements of it and I've gone into Photoshop and made myself a pattern. And here is the pattern. So it's a simplified version of what I've made and it breaks it down into a couple of pieces. We have to make this back plate, as you can see here, which has a couple of clips at the top. That's the bit that sits inside the vehicle. And then we have to make this section here, which is a sort of the long gun part. That's a little bit more complicated, but it's still not that complicated to make. So the first thing we need to do is actually make this back plate. So what I've done is I've taken another printout of uh, this plan and I've stuck those pieces onto some one millimeter thick styrene sheet and we can now go ahead and cut those out. This is just stuck on using some Pritt stick so it's easy to remove the pattern once we're done and you want to cut it out as neatly as you possibly can. You can see there's a grey line around the edge. Leave that grey line. You've got to cut right up to that and you need to make this very accurate indeed because this is the key piece that holds it into the vehicle. So let's get these two pieces cut out and then we can construct the rest of it.
after only a few minutes work you can see I've now cut out two of these I've done a little bit of fine tuning on them you will always need to do a bit of fine tuning to make sure they fit because these clips have a very small window that they have to uh, poke into on the doors but we can just do a test fit now so you can see I can push those into the little gap there and they fit quite nicely and that should slide in up to the top which it does so that is the basis of our little wing pieces now we need to make the second part so I'll bring in the pattern here and you can see that we need to make a bar that goes across the bottom that's the sort of the thick part the laser part here now this actually needs to be five millimeters deep but I don't have any five millimeter styrene what I do have though is two millimeter styrene so I've just cut myself a strip here which is the same width as my diagram which is six millimeters so what I've got to do is cut a few pieces of this off uh, at one end you do need a little notch so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the lower piece to that length I'm going to cut the upper piece to that length and then I'm also going to be cutting a one millimeter sheet that is this thick as well I'm sticking that on top because I want this to be five millimeters deep so we'll have one short piece of this two millimeter stuff one longer piece of this two millimeter stuff and then another piece of one millimeter across the top it will make sense as I show you so first things though I've got to cut these pieces so on this diagram you can see there's a gray bit at the end so the first piece needs to go right to the end the second piece needs to miss out that grade piece so it needs to be slightly shorter and then we can plastic weld those together and I've got to make two of those because obviously we're making a mirrored version for the other side so let me get these pieces cut and plastic welded together and I'll show you the notch and then we'll add that extra one millimeter sheet on top just to make the five millimeters of depth And there we go that's exactly what I was meaning so we've got the uh, long piece of two millimeter styrene with the shorter piece stuck on it uh, off to one side I've now cut another piece of this is one millimeter styrene and I'm going to stick that onto the top surface there and that will give us the five millimeters thickness so I'll do both of these and then we can start shaping this piece now that those are all stuck together we can start to shape this so you can see what I'm doing on this one is to curve the top edge so it makes it a little bit more like a barrel and I'm just generally sort of shaping it and rounding off some pieces so it doesn't look like a square block the end piece really wants to have quite a curve to this top section and by the top section I mean the longer piece that we have here so I'm going to just gently uh, sand that down using various files and sandpaper until I've got a bit of a curve to it and just generally tidy it up that should only take a, a few minutes to do and we'll end up with something that looks quite nice but currently you can see this is one that I haven't done so it's really square and this is one that I'm working on you can see it's starting to look a bit more curved it's just going to get it as close to the original shape as we can possibly get it These are looking quite good now I've got a nice little bit of a curve to them I probably could do a little bit more but I'm pretty happy with how those are looking so we can now attach those to the first piece we made and I've been using my pattern as a guide you can see here if I line this piece up onto uh, the pattern then take one of these this is the one with the notch at that end as I can see marked on the template there I then want to attach it in that position so it's got to be right at the bottom and lined up just like that and I will do the same to this one here using the uh, pattern again to guide it I'm just going to put a bit of plastic weld on those and get them attached I'll let that set and then we can add some of the fine details to make it look exactly like the original piece would so uh, let's get these plastic welded on Got my plastic weld here get some on a brush I'll just 
brush it onto the bottom here just to get a little bit of a bond going and I can line this up so that it matches exactly my pattern and then we know that this will fit perfectly onto the toy so like that that's pretty much perfect I'll just put a bit more plastic weld around just to make sure that's a really good firm bond but you can see we're starting to get the shape of the uh, little missing jet pieces that's not looking too bad at all so we'll do the other one here on this side again just a bit of plastic weld along there I'll make sure my pattern is lined up and I can drop that on like so yeah that's looking good now you could just leave these pieces like this and uh, paint them with silver or chrome them and they would look pretty good but if we look at the original ones they've got quite a lot of detail on them you can see there's little dots and lines and dashes and raised panels so what i've done on this pattern is drawn most of those on so i'm going to sort of do my own versions of them you can see where there are some dots so i'm going to drill some little holes just to make some indents where there are lines i'm going to use a needle file just to score some lines and then these other panels i'm just going to make out of some off cuts of styrene when I make pieces I tend to keep lots of little off cuts of bits so I'm just going to use those to make those little pieces and stick them on there's also if we look at it, the original one here you can see there's this little sort of pip on uh, one end of it so I'm going to recreate that again just using some off cut bits that I uh, have kept from making these I'm going to stick a piece on the end here so if we get that I'll plastic weld that on there and then trim it down to size and generally just add some details to it so it looks a little bit more complicated than these basic shapes and I think we'll end up with something that really does look the part certainly when we've chromed it I think it will look very close and most people won't notice so I'm just going to uh, add all of these details now
And there we go, you can see I've now made two versions of this uh, wingtip piece of a left and a right, and I'm really happy with how they are looking. The details on them are not exactly the same as the original, but they just give it enough sort of depth that it looks like it should be uh, the original piece. And by the time this is painted, it will look very nice. So the next thing we do have to do is actually paint this. So I'm gonna give it a quick undercoat with a spray gray plastic primer. On top of that, I'm then gonna spray it with a gloss paint. I would normally spray it with a black gloss, but I don't have any black gloss, so I'm gonna spray it with with a white gloss paint. Really, we just want a gloss finish. And then on top of that, I'm gonna be using some Stuart Semple Mirror Chrome to give it the chrome effect. So uh, let me get all those paints put on and then we can uh, get the uh, silver chrome put on and you'll see exactly what this should look like. I should have said earlier on in this video, if you want to make your own version of these pieces, then this pattern will be available on toyploy.com. So go there and uh, download those. There are a whole load of patterns there for various parts for mask vehicles and also replacement uh, sticker files. So uh, do go and check that out. But in the meantime, let's get these pieces painted. These have now had their undercoat and then a coat of gloss on the top, so you can see there's a little bit of a shine to it. I'm now going to paint them with some Stuart Semple Mirror Chrome, which I've shown a couple of times on this channel. It's uh, really quite good at getting a good chrome finish on small items like this. It's fairly expensive, and a pot like this costs about £30, but it does go a long way. You just need to apply it very thinly and you'll get a nice chrome finish. So uh, let me get both of these uh, painted up and I'll show you the results. And here they are all painted. As you can see, I get quite a good chrome effect with that uh, silver paint. It really does work quite nicely. And I would suggest if you're doing projects like this, then do get yourself some of the uh, Stuart Semple mirror chrome. So we can now fit these into the vehicle. You can see at the top, I've not bothered painting those little bits there where I was holding the piece for painting. So let's get these pieces fitted inside the Thunderhawk. And there you go, you can see that makes quite a big difference to how this toy looks. Let's transform it into its car mode. So push those in, lock those down, lock that in place. There, that's looking a whole lot better.
Now we come on to the tyres for the Thunderhawk and I've been trying to find some replacements that we can just slot straight on and without buying a 124th scale car I haven't actually been able to find anything that just fits but what I have done is been onto AliExpress and I found these which are replacement tyres. Uh, they are fairly cheap you can buy a packet of 10 I think they cost me just over five pounds and they arrive from China fairly quickly. Unfortunately they are a little bit too big you can see they don't actually fit in but that's not really an issue because uh, you can modify them. If I turn this car around you can see on this side here's one that I've modified and it fits really quite nicely so I'm going to just be modifying those. As I say you can just get kits with uh, 124 scale uh, wheels and they may fit but I don't like to uh, sort of buy another toy and take a part off it just to fix a toy like this because then you've got another toy with bits missing. I'd rather go down this route and uh, make something that works. So what we've got to do is modify four of these tyres so that they fit onto these wheel rims and it's really rather simple. All you've got to do is take a knife, we need to trim off a bit of this edge and then we're going to use some coarse sandpaper to sand it down. That then leaves you with a fairly rough edge but what we can do then is burn it a bit. So I've got a little lighter here and I will just then use the lighter to melt the top surface and melt it back down so it's a nice sort of smooth finish. You'll end up with something that's not perfect but it really does do the job and when they're all on the vehicle and it's sitting on the ground like this you're never going to notice that these tyres have been sort of modified and tidied up. So let's get cutting and make all of these tyres fit onto the Thunderhawk. <music> And there you go, after only a few minutes work, I've now got four tyres that really do look pretty good and they will certainly look very nice on the car. I've just got to add them onto the hubs. I've taken the hubs off the car, basically you just twist them and they will come off because they're much easier to put on when the car is not in the way. You'll need a screwdriver just to help get them in place and they're quite easy to fit while they're still warm from being heated with a lighter. So I'm just going to pop these on. You can see they pop on quite nicely and then it's just a case of sort of uh, wiggling them around until they uh, fit. You'll see the inside part of the tyre is a little bit more awkward and that's why I have a screwdriver here just to help it sort of get onto the rim but it's not that much work so I can get all of these four tyres fitted and put them back on the Thunderhawk.
So there we go, we've got some uh, new tyres added and they don't look bad at all. There's a little bit of a sort of roughness to them if you look right from the front, but as this car's essentially going to be sitting on the ground like that, you will not see it. And they are pretty cheap to buy. I'll put a link in the description as to where I get them from. Uh, they came from uh, China on AliExpress and um, certainly do a pretty reasonable job. And I'm very happy with uh, how those are turned out. And there we go, that's it for this restoration. I've taken what was a very beaten up and well-loved Thunderhawk that had at one point been covered in PVA glue, cleaned it all up. I've uh, made some new wing ends for it. I've sorted out some replacement tyres, given it a new set of stickers, and I've got a really very displayable looking car that I'm very happy with. It's been a fair amount of work, but nothing that has been too impossible to do. And I've had great fun doing it. So if you want to have a go yourself, the files that I've created to uh, make the new wing ends are available for free on toyploy.com and as I say I will be putting a link in the description as to where I got the tyres. They're not a perfect match but they really do a very good job and for the price it's well worth getting some. If you've enjoyed this video then check out some of my other mask restoration projects and uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.